How's that look, guys? Let me get out of the way. See if that's straight or not. Looks straight to me. It looks pretty good right there. Now I've got the same flag up there at the sawmill building. And a lot of you guys ask me when you see that flag, what flag does it represent? Well, this is the Tennessee state flag. And my wife bought me this one just a few weeks ago. And I wasn't sure where to put it down here in the timber frame. But once I put up this metal wall the other day, I thought to myself, that flag will look really good right in front of that white metal. It shows up really good. What do you guys think? So welcome back to the sawmill, friends. We're gonna be working down here in the timber frame today because we got about an inch of rain yesterday, an inch of rain the day before, and last night about a quarter of an inch. So therefore, outside here at the farm is nothing but a swamp. I was gonna do some sawmilling, but it's way too wet to get the track loader or the tractor down here in the log yard and not make just a complete mud hole. I tell you, it's just, it's bad down here right now. Hopefully it's dry up here over the next few days. But we're down here in the shop and I've got a lot of stuff I want to get done today. And the first thing I want to do is get some quarter sawn white oak out of the kiln that we just got through drying a few weeks ago and run some of it through this planer and see how it looks. Other than all the rain we got last night in the past few days, it's a pretty cool day out here. Not too bad. I've not even been in here since I cut off the kiln. That's the first time these doors have opened. I finished off this load about two weeks ago. Sometimes you can reach in these stacks and pull out a board. If one's loose enough, that one right there is actually pretty loose. Might pull that one out. Yep, there it comes. It's like about six inches wide, maybe, maybe five and a half. Well, this one right here, friends, is not quarter sawn. It's actually flat sawn, but that'll be just fine. We'll run this through the planer and see how it looks. Friends, right there is the first board through the planer. I skip plane this down to one inch. It looks pretty good right there, really clear. Got a knot right there on that side. But other than that, a really nice board and it's right at five and three quarter inches on the width. And also I got the moisture meter out to check the moisture. So this is my Delmhurst meter. If you have a sawmill or if you're a woodworker, I advise you to get yourself a Delmhurst moisture meter. I bought this one several years ago. You can get them on Amazon. There's a link down below to that. This is not sponsored by Delmhurst, but in my opinion, they make the best moisture meter on the market. So we got this one set up. We got the temperature set at 70, which is the universal temperature that you set up for lumber that's not inside of a kiln. Our moisture reading is set at 32, which is for white oak. I have my pins inserted right there on the side. And the moisture is 7.2% on four quarter white oak. That's what you want right there, friends, 7.2%. I'd have been happy with anything less than nine, but 7.2, 7.3, that's a win right there, friends. Now we're gonna switch gears and the other side of the shop and work on these treated sits by sitses. This right here is gonna be my anvil stand for over in the blacksmithing area. Now, traditionally, I know that a lot of people do use a stump for their anvil, but I had these sits by sitses left over from a project from several years ago. And I thought it would be a good use to throw a stand together pretty fast so we can get that forge turned on and start moving some metal. Do two of these at a time. What I'm gonna do is uh, glue these together. I know glue doesn't do very well with treated timbers and that's okay. This doesn't have to be nothing real fancy. We're gonna glue two together and also use some screws to bond them together. And as soon as that sets up pretty good, 
we will take both pieces and attach them together with some aisle thread. I'm also thinking about doing some shoshuji bond. I know I'm not saying that right on this stand also because I hate the look of treated pine. It looks like it's kind of a greenish color. I don't like the looks of it all. So if I take this outside once it's completed and burn it and use a respirator, I think I'll be okay. And it will give it more of an industrial kind of vintage look. The first thing we're gonna to need to build this stand are, you guessed it, some clamps. I'd say two is more than enough. I was actually considering making an anvil stand out of black walnut, but I thought too many people would get upset over that, so I didn't. But I got two anvils, so the next stand, I use walnut. What do you guys think? Even though this is some crude woodworking, it actually is woodworking. So it's kind of nice to do some woodworking in my woodworking shop that I've been building for the past, I think, three years now. Do a little rehearsal here first, as Paul Sellers calls it. Make sure you get a good lamination right there. This one right here seems to be thicker than the other one, and that's impossible. All right, let's clean off these faces just a little. And once again, it's not recommended by the manufacturer to use wood glue on pressure treated wood, but I'm gonna do it anyways. I don't think it will hurt anything. I'm using the Type Bond 3, which is for exterior projects. So that's probably the best stuff they make for something like this. And this is kind of overkill. I could just bolt these together, but this gives you a little bit of insurance right here as far as the stand goes. I'm not gonna put a whole lot on here. Like I was saying, we'll do those timber locks as soon as we put this in the clamps. I'm not treating this like I would a tabletop or anything like that. Just a little bit for some added help. While doing my research on blacksmithing, it looks like a lot of people actually bury their anvil stump or their anvil stand in the ground. I thought that was kind of interesting. Here we go. It's all or nothing when you get to this point. These clamps could use a little oil. They're a little tight. Let's see if I can bring that side up just a little. There we go. This don't have to be perfect. It's not fine furniture, but I like to get it pretty close just to make it look right. Grab one of my mallets, knock this side down just a little. It's pretty even on the sides or the ends rather. That's close enough. I'll probably take my grinder and uh, go over the end grain on this whole thing when it's done to make sure it's flat. But. Glued up pretty good right there. Not too bad. I know I said I wasn't going to do this, but I think I will put two pipe clamps on the very top just to close the seams. Then we'll put these timber lots in it. That should be plenty. I keep on saying that it should be, and apparently it's not because I'm still putting stuff on it here. And these pipe clamps haven't been used since I was at my old wood shop five years ago, I guess. They could also use some cleaning up. You guys can see that we've got a little bit of a seam right here on the top, which ain't gonna matter. I mean, it's a blacksmith anvil stand, but I'd like to get that a little bit better if I can. It's kind of comical. Whenever I do these woodworking videos or doing stuff in the shop, 
I feel like I'm Norm Abrams narrating what I'm doing on the New Yankee Workshop. It's kind of funny. There we go. That's what it needed right there, guys. Now, not bad, not too bad. Flat enough right here. We'll get the timber locks and drive it home. Look over my mess. One day I will organize this area of the shop. Just not today. Those should be long enough right there. Guys, this right here is a good thing to have in your shop at all times. I buy these in bulk 50 at a time and I think they're about a dollar a piece. But they're always good to have around because there's always a need for them it seems like. I go through a lot of them. So this right here guys is an eight inch timber screw and we should get about three inches at least. Let me check that measurement. Uh, actually no, about two and three quarters of connection between this timber and the other one. So not too bad, more than enough to hold these things together. This right here, friends, might be totally unnecessary, but I think I'm gonna put another timber lock on the other side. And what I'm doing here is tracing my measurement because I'm weird about stuff like this, I tell you. It's weird, normal people don't do this. So I'm marking my hole where I put it on this face. And I really got into the habit of doing stuff like this when I built this timber frame. It kind of goes along with the joinery. And I think it looks better. So I'm gonna put screws, the same two timber lots on this face over here, but I'm, I'm gonna make them about an inch lower so they don't hit each other. But I want them to line up on the same plane. And even though it doesn't matter, I think it looks better. If you get in the habit of doing stuff like that, pulling your measurements and putting stuff in alignment, I think it looks a whole lot better when you build stuff. And when somebody sees it, Two people out of 10 will probably notice it and know that you gave a crap and you cared what it looked like enough to make sure everything's in alignment. All right, friends, I went ahead off camera and put together those other two and put those in the clamps. We can't do nothing with those right now. I think Type Bond says a 24 hour wait period something like that, so probably tomorrow we'll build that stand, or finish it rather. But for right now, we're gonna head up here to the house and get a brand new tool that just showed up in the mail. I was going to carry this in the shop, but it's pretty heavy and I think I would just unbox it out here on the tailgate. And I'll give you guys a hint on what this is. This is actually a tool that I need and I don't own. I've never owned one of these actually. Kind of surprised me when I think about it. This is something I've always needed to make sure I can drill nice straight holes. There's your hint. So most of you probably figured it out by now. 
it's a drill press. And it looks like there's a little bit of assembly required. We'll start putting this thing together. It shouldn't take us too long. Famous last words. Probably take me the rest of the day. This is my first ever drill press. It's a small one, it's a bench top model. It does have variable speed. I got this on Amazon. If you're interested in them, there's a link down below. You can go check it out. It's made by Vivor or Vever. I'm not sure how you pronounce that. But I think it will serve all my needs down here in the shop for the time being. So briefly here, guys, a few of the features. It does have a nice laser right there. That's actually the light. There's the laser. It does have a working light as well. And let me tilt the camera just a little. All right, so right there is the variable speed. When it's turned on, you can pretty much change how fast it's gonna go. So it looks like a pretty good drill press. I'll let you guys know as time goes on how much I like it. I'll probably get a floor model later on, but for right now, this one should do the trick. All right, friends, that's all I got for today. And these little shop videos, I know there's not a lot going on, but there's a lot of processes going on in here so I can make progress on this blacksmithing area and the entire shop. And if you're wondering why I didn't finish the doors yet, it's because I wanna put some iron work on the outside of them. And in order to do that, I need the forge up and running. So that's why I kind of stopped on the doors until we get the forge set up and the anvil. That way I can finish those up at the same time. So tomorrow is, uh, God, what is tomorrow? Tomorrow's Wednesday. I'm not sure when you guys are going to see this video. Tomorrow we'll finish up that anvil stand. I've got both sets of those eight by eights in the clamps. They should be good to go by the morning. We will bolt those together. We'll use the drill press to bore a hole through them for the all thread. Then we'll do the burning effect. And uh, I may wrap them in metal also. I'm not decided on that yet. I'm not sure. We'll get the anvil out and we'll get the uh, wire wheel grinder and some other grinding pads I have uh, to get the anvil ready for work. It's a Peter Wright and I think it's about 125 pounds. And there's a pretty cool story behind it. I'll share that with you guys tomorrow. So we'll do those two things. We'll get the forge hooked up to the propane tank. I've got all the gas lines down here. That shouldn't take too long. And I may do some saw milling tomorrow because I just checked the weather and it looks like the day after tomorrow, we're gonna to have rain again and I need to finish up that cherry. So we may get up there to the saw mill first thing in the morning, work on that cherry, and then move our way down here to the shop for the rest of the day. So uh, thanks for watching friends. I really appreciate it. Be sure you hit the thumbs up button and make sure you're subscribed to the channel. A lot of people have been reaching out to me here lately and telling me that YouTube or something has unsubscribed them from the channel. So uh, make sure you still subscribe. That does happen sometimes with this big YouTube system that we're all in right here or YouTube universe is a better word for it, I guess. So once again, friends, thanks for watching. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Mm -hmm.